What's up, Crypto Crew, and welcome back, or if this is your first time, I'm Captain Crypto Might, actively escaping the Matrix, scoping out the crypto ocean, so if you like your odds, get on the boat, stay up to date, thumbs up, and join the hunt. Into the boat! Crypto Crew, today we got more of Jonathan Sampolinski's interview with Vlad of the Bitcoin Takeover podcast, a phenomenal seven and a half hour session. Meanwhile, the next leg of the bull run is brewing, things are heating up for Caspa, the Cas USDT pairing is live on crypto. Kraken, Binance is teasing both Caspa and Nacho community, and Caspa Smart Contracts launch Sunday, August the 31st, 2025. That's why I will continue to state this, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Because when the bull run arrives, Crypto Crew, you want more than just the right picks. You need timing and trusted execution. That's why we've partnered with Caleb and Brown, a leading crypto brokerage known for trust and results worldwide. You get a personal broker 24-7, no bots, no endless tickets. You can trade over 250 digital assets. Yes, Casper is included. Enjoy straightforward withdrawals with no hidden fees and benefit from institutional grade security and experience. If you want calm, competent help navigating your bull run, check out Caleb and Brown via the link in the description box below. I really think the technology behind Casper is unique and is going to work in a cash-based system. Crypto crew, let's get in today's vid where the host, Vlad, gets to see the block deck in action for the first time. Also, Jonathan Sampolinski shares his journey from the early Bitcoin days that led him on the path of DAGs. So the first generalization was not into a DAG, but rather to a, um, a different chain selection rule within a tree. So Bitcoin already has an implicit tree structure. So when Bitcoin has a fork, technically you, you can, you are, you're supposed to see a tree, at least the miner that observes the, the two forks before choosing the longest chain. Aviv actually wrote the first uh, academic paper on Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin and red balloons, when he was in Microsoft um, in the West Coast. When I started my lab project with him, his interest was, was mainly uh, focused on why, what happens when you increase the block rate of Bitcoin, because it was very apparent that the 10 minute rule was chosen um, for good reasons. So we tried to understand what happens with when the block rate increases. Uh, we came up with the ghost protocol, which is still not, um, technically you can call it a DAG, but, but, it's, but conceptually it's really a tree. It's a, it's a different way to select a fork within a tree. Um, a few a few weeks uh, or or maybe not much more than that before we published the paper, Ghost was mainly an erroneous attempt to improve Bitcoin's protocol into Ghost, and we erroneously claimed that Ghost um, can scale to any block rate and re recover the same security guarantees. This was a flawed claim. To my or to our defense, we weren't yet too well versed with distributed systems. By the time I I went to financial crypto conference to show the paper, we already knew there's a problem, but um, we didn't have a final analysis of of is it broken or just not improving Bitcoin as we thought, which is it turns out to be the latter. But we knew exactly what the attack is and. I met there Gregory Maxwell from, from Bitcoin Core. I told him the protocol and he immediately showed me the attack. He didn't even need to think about it, which I, I knew the attack, but I, I thought like it's, I thought it will take a long time to, to explain it to people. Not long after that, Aviv already, Aviv, my advisor, Aviv Zohar, um, he, he pointed us towards the, the notion of DAGs. But again, DAG, there, there's two things and, um, it's important for people to remember this. DAG is just a framework. So when I say point us in, in the direction of DAG, I don't mean to those early 2011, 2012 ideas of circling in Bitcoin around keeping the chain, you know, longest chain, then adding things um, from the side. Rather, I'm talking about a pure, uh, um, a true, uh, a clean generalization of Nakamoto in the sense that there's no like uh, drive chain or things uh, from from the side like uh, there's no second rate citizens. It's just like take all blocks and try to order them and linearize the DAG, so to speak, in a canonical in a canonical manner that will converge across all blocks. And that that's the um, that's when the journey, the real the real DAG journey a journey uh, started. Oh, this is nice. Yeah, what is this? Oh, this is the block DAG. So this is a visualizer of the blocks that are being mined right now. Yes, this is like Bitcoin with internet speed. Pardon my cliche, but this is clean proof of work. 
Uh, there's no tricks. There's no super nodes. The miners are anonymous or pseudonymous. There's no committee running this. There's no rotating committees. No BFT. And, and everything here, pure proof of work. To me, I don't know if it's to you. To me, this induces trust. Like for me, this this visualizer. What, what do you think? I think it's hypnotizing in some way. It it looks like a living organism of sorts, which is always interesting. I used to spend a lot of time looking at the Bitcoin mempool, which is mempool.space. It's a very nice visualizer and it just shows every 10 minutes when blocks get mined and you can look inside to see what's there. This one is a bit too fast for me because I would want to just stop and zoom in to see what's happening there beyond this visualization. And of course I can do that in uh, another section of this. It just makes me wonder how I can just randomly click on a block and see what kind of transactions are inside. There's also a graph inspector, which you might find more to your taste. It's the URL is um, kgi.caspad.net. Oh, so I can click on blocks and I see the transactions inside. I like this. Yeah, kudos to the developers. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't remember the names and I don't know that or, or either don't know or don't remember who, who created these things. Um, but shout out, yeah, it's, both of these visualizers have, are pleasing. One, one is pleasing to me, one is pleasing to Vlad. I mean, this one feels more functional. You can even see some arrows that point to connections between, I guess these are transactions. When oh, these are blocks. These are, these are block references. It's like Bitcoin, I told you, there's just block references. There's a pause button and you can basically look at the current state of the DAG. Can you call this a blockchain? Because it's not the traditional blockchain design, it's a DAG. I think it depends on the context. If you're comparing this to regular BFT, yes, it's a blockchain. If you, if you want to have the, in that context, you would call it a blockchain. But in the context of proof of work protocols, you would call you would call it a block DAG. I think I think the 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 suiting term is it depends on the on the context of the listener or what they are what what they are trying to get. Like, I wouldn't say it's not a blockchain if, if I'm speaking to someone in a loose, broad context. I remember last year, and I, I'm sorry that I interrupted you from what you were saying, but there was a piece of news about someone who went to a hotel room and mined Caspa and made like $5,000 or something in a few days. Wow, not me. It was sort of a scandal because the conversation was around the fact that someone basically went and consumed a lot of electricity from a hotel room for which he paid like a hundred dollars there were such many such questions uh, early on in bitcoin there, there were many ethical questions about people using your university clusters even genuinely uh just to to track the network to have it mine or people using public facilities to mine i did not know this happened with uh with cas but i told you cas is like bitcoin so i think i guess it's just a proof of that right yeah, and I, I, I guess we all know at least one university professor who's mining bitcoin in his lab or at least used to but anyway, last year, Caspa was the most profitable proof of work coin. And I don't know exactly what happened to that. Maybe there was a halving of rewards or something. It was quite a big deal. Even the guy from the Bitcoin University who gets a lot of views on YouTube decided to make a video that was called is Caspa the, the new Bitcoin. And I, I feel like the arguments that he picked were sort of low blows or the lowest hanging fruits that he could. Was he was the answer yes or no? His answer was no, because it's impossible, no. right? You can't have the same immaculate conception that surrounded Bitcoin in its infancy. And I, I tend to agree, yeah. I do agree with that, but at the same time, it doesn't mean you shouldn't try. I mean, again, it's okay that there is a cultural um, prohibition or press against launching endless or useless L1 platforms or tokens. I'm not critical of that sentiment it has its role i'm not turning the other cheek as well i'm just as you see i'm less informed about it there's a room for this uh, cultural press against it but again it's not an attempt to do a new bitcoin in the sense that again bitcoin doesn't have lots of aspirations these days so it's, it's not competition even bitcoin has a very strong asp um, value proposition and for that value proposition you don't need 10 blocks per second you don't need even a bit one block per 10 minutes you can have one block per hour it's not it's not the same kind of system it's more about implementing 
the proof of work values or architecture or principled architecture for a broader contribution. Bitcoin is not today aspiring to be anything other than store value, as you mentioned. And so I don't think it's reasonable to compare it in the sense that Okay, Casper is trying to be the new Bitcoin. It is trying to do things that everyone thought Bitcoin would do, would want to do. This is maybe more a, a better portrayal. The ideas, the experimentations, the insights that, that the community gained. If all this was ready back in 2011, 2012, then the whole ecosystem, the whole discussion was different. And then Bitcoin could have been, or at least wouldn't narrow its aspirations. And then you could you could have described in that rewrite of history, you could have described this blog dag that you saw as an attempt to mimic or um, outpace uh, Bitcoin, become the new Bitcoin. Bitcoin's aspirations and value proposition are very valuable. They don't require more than a slow, more than uh, my friend here, my, my Bitcoin friend here. Crypto crew Jonathan Sampolinski encourages us to increase our understanding, not just in terms of Caspa, but also from the other great crypto projects such as Solana, Ethereum, and Bitcoin as the Caspa devs studied them to develop the project we know today as Caspa. The word of God says, study to show thyself approved, yes unto the most high when it comes to spiritual matters such as life eternal, which is a gift from God aka grace through faith in Jesus Christ as as your personal Lord and Savior. It also means to study the world around you, study the crypto ocean. Caspa borrows the best trades from top projects, proof of work security like Bitcoin, decentralized, highly scalable, yet faster than Solana, and an ecosystem that is being built as we speak, reminiscent of Ethereum. And as of this recording, Crypto Crew, the first big catalyst post crescendo is Caspa smart contracts going live via Casplex at the end of this week. But wait! We at Your Crypto Crew got more in store for you, so stay tuned. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Stick around. Fix your mind before you get to the grind. And with that said, let's continue to escape the matrix. Let's continue to be on the lookout for the next big thing here on the crypto ocean. Grow in grace and let's make some crypto waves. Say I.